Hello, this is my second test of the Rode Video Mic. This video is intended for people who have just purchased the Rode Video Mic or are thinking about it. First, I'm going to compare for you the Video Mic's three attenuator settings. Second, I'm going to explain and demonstrate clipping, an audio problem that can happen very easily while using the Video Mic. For this test, I'll be using the Panasonic GS500. Okay, on the Rode video mic, located inside the battery compartment, are three attenuator switches. Your choices are 0, negative 10, or negative 20 decibels. These switches can be adjusted by using a toothpick or a small jeweler's screwdriver. For this test, my camera is 10 feet away and the video mic is on my camera. Okay, let's hear the difference between the three attenuator settings. This is the zero decibel setting. The negative 10 decibel setting. And negative 20. There's a pretty big difference between the three settings. Most audio pros would recommend you keep it set at negative 10 decibels. Next, I'm going to explain and demonstrate the audio problem called clipping. Clipping can occur very easily when using the Rode video mic and it can really ruin your movies. So, what is clipping? Basically, your microphone picks up a sound that is too loud for your camera to handle. All the sound waves should come to a point. When they're clipped, they have a squared off top. That point that's missing is audio information. If that information is lost, you will hear a distorted sound. The big problem is that point cannot be recovered. It's gone. Some software can help clipping a little bit, but there's no way to recover that, and your audio will never sound as good as it could have if it wasn't clipped. So, if you're using the Rode video mic, how can you avoid clipping? First, as the audio pros recommend, keep the mic at the negative 10 decibel setting. It's also recommended that you manually adjust your camera's attenuator settings. The audio pros will tell you to set it somewhere between negative 10 and negative 15 decibels. If your camera has this capability, you'll want to monitor your audio and watch the peaks. The peaks, the loudest sounds that you're recording, should fall in the area of negative 6 to negative 3 decibels to be safe. If you get too close to zero or go over zero, then you'll be in the red and you will be clipping. So, what does clipping really sound like? In this demonstration, I will first record a sound at the recommended levels, that is, the video mic set at negative 10 decibels and my camera set at negative 12 decibels with AGC activated. I will then record the same sound set at what we'll call a clipping audio level. That will be the Rode video mic set at zero decibels, my camera set at zero decibels with AGC turned off. and to maintain repeatability, a recording of dialogue on CD. There seems no question but that the clock dial. There seems no question but that the clock dial. There seems no, there seems no. And finally, my voice test at the recommended level. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. And at a yelling level. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three, three, three. For the comparisons you just heard, I equalized the audio levels in post. Therefore, you were able to focus on the sound of clipping instead of being distracted by how much louder the one recording was over the other. Okay, so you heard clipping is a pretty nasty audio problem. Setting up your camera and microphone on 
safe audio levels can help a lot. It's also a good idea to monitor your audio with a good pair of headphones as you're recording. Now, if you're just taking some video at a backyard picnic, you might feel a little odd wearing your headphones the first time. But if you're actually recording something that's very important to you, or someone's actually paying you for it, you better not hit the record button until your headphones are on. It's just too risky. Besides clipping, you also could possibly forget to turn the mic on, and then you'll record but with headphones, you'll notice it right away and you can avoid that embarrassing mistake. There are two big advantages to the Rode video mic that I have yet to mention. The first one is how the video mic handles ambient sound compared to your built-in microphone. The other one is the fact that the video mic can come off of your camera and get closer to your talent. I will demonstrate these two advantages in my third test of the Rode video mic. So stay tuned and I hope this was helpful.